Hi, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read you the story called The Mitten. And if you look, <clears throat> this girl only has one mitten on. Looks like she dropped her other mitten on the ground. The Mitten by Alvin Trislet. It was the coldest day of winter. And the little boy was trudging through the forest, gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find, the old woman had said as she sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. Oh my. All morning long, the boy worked picking up sticks until his sled was loaded. Then a very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up the last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. What color is his mitten? Yellow. Now, how could a boy do this on the coldest day of the year? Well, I don't know, but that's the way my grandfather tells the story. Off he went with his load of wood, and the mitten was left lying in a snowdrift. As soon as he was out of sight, a little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold, and she spied the little boy's mitten with its feathery fur cuff. She popped right in to get warm, and it was just the right size for a tiny little mouse. Presently, a green frog came hip-hopping across the snow. Anybody home? asked the frog when it saw the mitten. Why, only me, said the mouse. Come in quickly before you freeze. They had no sooner settled themselves snugly in the red wool lining when an owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten? he asked. Well, if you mind your manners, replied the mouse, for owls always made her nervous. And don't wiggle around too much, added the frog, because it's going to be a little tight in here. So now there's the mouse and the frog, <clears throat> and the owl is going to get in. I don't know. You think they'll all fit? <clears throat> oh, yes, they do. Look. Well, it wasn't too long before a rabbit came down the forest path. Is there room in that nice warm mitten, asked the rabbit. It's awfully cold out here. Not too much space left, said the mouse and the frog and the owl. But come in. We'll see what we can do. So now there's a mouse a frog, an owl, and a rabbit in that yellow mitten. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox trotted up to the mitten. And after a good deal of trouble, she got herself in along with the others. The mouse was beginning to think maybe she shouldn't have been so generous, but it was bitter cold outside. So what could she do? Oh my, so now look, there's the mouse, the frog, the owl, the rabbit, and the fox. And now, as if things weren't crowded enough, a new visitor was a big gray wolf who wanted to come in too. I don't know how we'll manage it, said the frog, but we'll try. Everyone moved around a bit and finally, the wolf squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded by now, but at least it was warm. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. It was a wild boar, and he was very anxious to get out of the wind. Oh dear, cried the mouse, for the mitten was already beginning to stretch a little. We just don't have any more room. I'll be careful, said the boar. With that, he squeezed himself into the mitten along with the mouse and the frog and the owl and the rabbit and 
the fox and the wolf. I know this is so because my grandfather told me. Look at them all in there. They are squeezed in there. But the worst was yet to come for who should appear now but a bear. He was very big and very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals, even before the bear had a chance to speak. Look how big the bear is. Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or a thank you, he began crawling into the mitten. He put his paws in first, and the mitten creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in, and one of the seams popped. Then he took a big breath, and he pushed himself in. Now, while all this was going on, along came a little black cricket. She was very old, and her creaky legs ached from the cold. When she saw the mitten, she said to herself, that looks like a nice warm place. I'll just hop over and see if I can squeeze in too. Okay, here's the cricket. Look how little, tiny little cricket. But oh me, that's all that was needed to finish off the poor mitten. The cricket had no more than put one scratchy foot inside when with a rip and a snap, the stitches came apart and the old leather cracked and the soft red lining split in half and popped all the animals out onto the snow. Well, at this very moment, the little boy discovered that he only had one mitten. So he went back to where he might have dropped the other one, but all he found were ripped apart pieces. And he thought he saw a little mouse scurrying by with a little piece of red wool perched on his head. It looked very much like the lining from the thumb of his missing mitten. Oh well, said the boy as he struggled with his cold hand inside his coat. My grandmother will surely have new, my new mittens finished by now. Then he hurried home with the north wind nipping at his cheeks. And my grandfather says he never did know what really happened to his mitten. The end. Can you remember some of the animals that were inside the mitten? Was there a cat or a mouse in the mitten? Right, a mouse. Was there a fish or a frog in the mitten? Right, a frog. Was there a hedgehog or a rabbit in the mitten? Right, a rabbit. Was there a kitten or a fox in the mitten? Right, a fox. Was there a reindeer or a wolf? Right, a wolf. Was there a boar or a donkey? Right, a boar. Was there a elephant or a bear? Right, a bear. And finally came along a little tiny, tiny bug. Was it a ladybug or a cricket? It was a cricket. And did the cricket fit? No. The, cr the cricket made the mitten pop open and rip all over. So I want you to think about if your mitten was big, what could you fit inside? If I had a big mitten, I could fit. My mitten is so big, I could fit a car in it. My mitten is so big, I could fit a pizza in it. What could you fit 
in a mitten if it was big. Thanks for coming to Story Friends. Bye.